to you this morning in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I am just so blessed. Have you ever found yourself saying that? I am just so blessed. When both our kids were born safe and healthy, that's what we kept saying. We are so blessed. Other people would look at us and say, you've got the million dollar family, you're blessed. When my parents celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary and when they were standing up and giving their speech and reflecting back on their life together, that's what they kept saying. We have been so blessed. When someone gets the all clear of the doctor's office, You'll often hear them say that. Someone who has a good job, a big house, a nice car, lots of money in the bank, someone who gets to go on lots of trips in their life, people look at that kind of life and they say they are blessed. People say we're blessed to live in a country like Canada. And don't get me wrong, we should be exceedingly thankful for all of these things. But if that is what it means to be blessed, if this is what blessedness looks like, then what about that couple who tried and tried and tried to conceive a child and it never happened for them? Why would some be blessed and others not? Or the guy who was standing on the street corner in the middle of the freezing rainstorm that we had last week, standing there completely soaking wet, holding a sign, begging for money. When we look at someone like that, do we see him as blessed? I bet he sure doesn't feel particularly blessed, at least not based on the world's definition. Or what about those who have to line up every single month, line up at the food bank? Or those living on social assistance? Or the ones who don't get the clear, the all clear from their doctor? Why does one receive healing and one doesn't? Or those who are mourning the death of a loved one? Or what about the millions of people in our world who have been forced to flee their homes because of war or because of famine? Do we see others? Do we see these people as blessed? Now we all have our own definition in our mind. We all have our own definition of what constitutes blessedness. And it's usually not those who are poor or those who go hungry or those who are weak or sick. In our world, when we think of someone who is blessed, we usually think of someone who is monetarily wealthy or successful in their careers or beautiful or enviable in some way. Blessed, at least according to the ways of the world, is most often understood as being the material kind. But in today's Gospel, Jesus he teaches something so radically different from that. He teaches us to see, not with the eyes of the world, but rather, Jesus is teaching us to see with a heart for the kingdom of God. He is teaching us how to really and truly recognize blessedness. He's not teaching us how to become blessed. He's not saying, go and become like that if you want to be blessed. That's not what he's saying. Jesus, in today's Gospel, is trying to show us 
how to recognize who it is that is already blessed by God. What we just heard is a passage of scripture that has come to be known as the Beatitudes. It's called that because of that constant refrain of blessing that we hear. Now Luke's version of the Beatitudes is a little different than the more familiar one that Matthew offers in his gospel. Both Matthew and Luke have this same passage, but they're slightly different from one another. And the difference between the two of them is important. So let me share a couple of the Beatitudes from Matthew's version so we can see the difference that we just heard in Luke's. Matthew, he records Jesus as saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Or, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Contrast that with what Luke records Jesus as saying. Luke has Jesus saying this, Blessed are you who are poor. Full stop. Not just poor in spirit, but just poor. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Or, blessed are you who are hungry now. Not hungering or thirsting for righteousness, but just plain hunger. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. In Luke's version of the Beatitudes, he focuses on the immediate and physical needs that people are living with in their lives. Blessed are you who are poor. Blessed are you who are hungry. For yours is the kingdom of God. And it's a message that is central to the entire Gospel of Luke. It's a message that Luke has been putting on the lips of Jesus for, from the very beginning of his gospel. Back when Mary was pregnant with Jesus, she visited Elizabeth. And while she was visiting Elizabeth with Jesus in her womb, she sang about the blessing the child that she was carrying within her would grow up to be for the poor, the hungry, the weak, and the lowly. We know this song that she sang as the Magnificat. My soul, it magnifies the Lord, she sang. And my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. His mercy is for those who fear Him. He has lifted up the lowly, he has filled the hungry with good things. And we heard that same message proclaimed when a few weeks ago Jesus preached a sermon on that passage from Isaiah in his hometown of Nazareth. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. In Luke's gospel, this is what he teaches is the heart of Jesus' whole reason for coming to be with us. In Luke's gospel, this is the message he teaches about what Jesus' heart is all about. That in Jesus, the poor matter. The hungry matter. The millions of people who have been displaced from their homes matter. The people who our world so often choose to ignore or turn their backs on, they matter. Jesus came so that we might come to know that God loves all people, but that God has a special concern for those who are suffering in our world. To be blessed is to matter to God. To be blessed is to be accepted by God. To be blessed is to be loved unconditionally by God. And Jesus says, blessed are the poor. 
Blessed are the hunger, because they too, they especially matter to God. Now another difference in Luke's version of the Beatitudes is that Luke also adds in a series of woes. He includes a series of warnings to those who are rich, to those who are full, to those who are living a comfortable and content life. He adds in a series of woes to all those who apparently have little regard for those who are doing without in this world. Now, it is too simplistic, I think. I think it is too simplistic to reduce this to a story about how the people who are having a hard time in life, how the ones who are suffering right now in life, will ultimately get their reward at the end in the kingdom of heaven. It's too simplistic to reduce that to a story about that or that how the rich and the well-off people will ultimately get what's coming to them. It's too simplistic to reduce it that way. The fact is that both Luke and Jesus, they would have been well aware of the common practice of using exaggeration and hyperbole to make a point that they wanted to make to the people they were speaking to. And so, when we hear those woes, and we hear those warnings, it is more likely that Jesus was not literally pronouncing eternal damnation for all the people who are rich and full and content. But rather what Jesus was trying to do, rather what Jesus wanted to do, was to shape them out of a life of complacency. What he wanted and was trying to do was to get them to lift their heads and to look around, to see the poor, to see the hungry, to see those who are suffering all around us, to see those who are in need. He wanted to get people to lift their heads and look around and to see all those who are in need with the same eyes and the same heart that God sees them with. Jesus wants to shake us out of our complacency so that we might see the blessedness of all of God's children. So on Thursday night, this past Thursday, how many of you were awakened from your sleep with the alarm on your cell phones announcing that the Amber Alert had been issued for riot? A horrible, piercing sound wakes us from our sleep. That alarm was announcing that we were searching throughout the province for a young girl. And sadly, this story had such a tragic end to it. But what is also tragic were the number of posts on social media that complained about that Amber Alert waking them up from their sleep, or interrupting the television show that they were watching on TV. People were actually calling 911 in order to complain about how their lives had been minimally inconvenienced by an alert that was sounded in an attempt to save a young girl's life. Raya's life matters to God. Jesus wants to shape us from that kind of complacency. Jesus wants to shake us from the kind of complacency that sometimes comes with living a comfortable and safe life. And he wants us to be able to open our eyes and recognize the blessedness of all God's children. 
And as we recognize the blessedness of all God's children, Jesus wants each one of us to take a greater responsibility for using all that we have been given in our lives to proclaim to a world that our God loves all people. That the poor matter to God. That the hungry matter to God. That refugees and immigrants matter. That those who are sick matter. That those who mourn matter. That you and I matter. We are all blessed, precisely because we are all beloved children of God. Let us pray. Dear God, make us mindful of those with less. But more than that, use each one of us to demonstrate your love and special concern for all those who suffer. In Jesus' name, Amen.